Hello and welcome. I'm Bonnie Graves and I'm continuing my journey around the beautiful Edna Valley and I'm in the appropriate spot, Edna Valley Vineyards, talking with winemaker Josh Baker. Hello, Josh. Hi. All right, Edna Valley, we've been having this conversation. Most Californians, even people from this region, are not totally certain where on earth, who's this lady Edna, where's her valley, is it near Napa, is it by Paso? So help um, locate for people where exactly we are in California. Yeah, so it's, it's relatively easy actually, just about halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles, uh, literally just about four hours from each and right against the coast. So as the crow flies, just maybe, you know, five miles from the Pacific. Well, and I think that's really important to understanding not just the varieties that thrive, in this type of climate, but the impact of the ocean in general, kind of on the uh, climate, on the culture, etc. So we're in the area where there's quite a lot of fog in the morning, um, but wonderful sort of daytime sunshine and then really cool at night, which leads us away from Zinfandel, away from Syrah and into right. what types of grapes? So tell us what does uh, that. So, so cool climate varieties. Yeah, it's interesting. The valley itself is an east-west facing valley uh, and actually an old estuary. So it opens right up to Morro Bay. So we get a lot of that marine influence that you're talking about. Pretty much, you know, you can set your watch by it. Foggy overnight, 11 o'clock, nice sunny blue skies, uh, 75 to 85, even during the hottest parts of the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, wind starts to blow at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon every every uh, every day, which is great for us. Dries things back out again, and then right. we start the cycle over again. Perfect. So. so we're really talking about Pinot Noir. We're talking about Chardonnay. Sh Chardonnay, yeah. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc does well. Syrah yeah. does well. Uh, but, Syrah, but Chardonnay it, particularly. It's interesting. The Syrah from this area, uh, John Alban, who's really quite a legend in, in the Edna Valley and in California winemaking in general, makes some fantastic Syrahs, of course, but there are Syrahs that have much more in common with sort of northern Rhone styles of Code Roti, of Cornas. They're really right. worlds apart from from those sort of jammy, fruit bomb, Barossa Valley, sure. Shiraz style. So again, you know, certain grapes thrive certain places, but that, that sense of place and climate is always really going to kind of have the final say on how the wine speaks in the glass. So Absolutely. one thing we talk about is impact of winemaker. I mean, what if, as a winemaker working with some of this, this great um, climate and this great fruit, do you try to get really involved and hands-on, or are you one of those guys who says, let's let the vineyard talk? I think so I would. You make a lot of wine. Yeah? yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say that I'm I'm kind of one of those guys who lets the vineyard talk. That's something that's important to me. I mm -hmm. think that you know we do source grapes from a place that's uh, that's special, and we feel like you know Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, wines uh, in general that come from this area are 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 special. And so, I always kind of you know tell people that my job is to really not mess anything up. Uh, bring the fruit in, keep it sound, do the smart thing. Don't interfere and, too and, much. <laughs> yeah, and let, the, and let the wine make itself, and that's really yeah. the way it's done. Yeah, I like that expression, let the wine make itself. Let's talk a little bit about 2012. We're, uh, you said you're about maybe a quarter of the way into harvest, so thank you, by the way, for yeah. taking time out of your schedule. It's yep. not totally crazy yet. You don't have the big shadows. No, your not, eyes too, not too bad yet. How is 2012 looking? I'm hearing great things about Pinot Noir it, this year. It, it looks great. Pinot Noir looks incredible. Uh, you know, in the valley here, Pinot Noir always does well for us. It's an early ripening variety, so we don't run what into kind of it. We'll geek out here. What kind of clones are you working with? We've got typically uh, lots of lots seven, of two, lots of two A, oh, six, yeah. six, seven, uh, seven, 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 and one fifteen. So mostly okay. D Dijon clones, right. but some two A as well. So for for people, we're not talking attack of the clones here. We're talking different Pinot Noir clone varieties. A lot of people right. don't really understand that part of building a Pinot Noir product, a finished product, is actually blending those clonal material selections from the vineyard itself. And you know, some bring aromatics, yeah. some bring structure, it, some it, bring acidity. But yeah, the key, the, the key thing is is getting yeah getting a, a multitude of those varieties. Yeah. Those clones in to make a nice complex attack of the Pinot clones, Noir. Attack of the Pinot clones. Yeah. Um, Chardonnay. I think one of the things I love about the Chardonnays from this region is acidity. So when we're talking about Chardonnay, you know, it's kind of gotten a bad rap over the years. A number of people who will say to me as a as sommelier, I don't like white wine. I say, mm, what you don't like is really crappy industrial Chardonnay or that, cloying whites, that feels yeah. like you're chewing on a piece of two by four, totally. etc. I think Chardonnay, even for me as a, it, my own personal drinking, we're kind of rediscovering California Chardonnay, particularly those from areas like this that have that beautiful bracing acidity. So what are right. you looking for when you're creating Chardonnay? Uh, I love acid and yeah. I think it's it's a theme through all of our wines. Uh, you know when you when you make Chardonnay from a cool climate uh, that's one of the things that you kind of just get ingrained with is uh, a decent amount of acidity and we try and embrace it. You know we do a lot of things to try and build mouthfeel in the middle of the palate but really play on the what minerality and acidity. What type of uh, oak are you using or what kind of choices you're making? Uh, most uh, you know most of the Chardonnay we make a multitude of Chardonnays um, but we uh, typically everything's French oak. We range from 
completely neutral all the way up to about 60% on our reserve yeah, program. Yeah, and we want to clarify that a little because, again, that's another piece that consumers sometimes are like, well, how, how did this wine come to be? In fact, we've got a Chardonnay right in our glass we right. should talk about here. This is the 2010 Paragon Vineyard Chardonnay. Yep. So, what, again, when you're building a Chardonnay, you're looking for that acidity, you're looking for the ripeness of fruit. Oak is a part of it, but, again, I think a lot of people don't really understand that that's one of the winemaking choices. The best metaphor is maybe making a soup. You've got your stock. You've got <laughs> just a little bit of that bay leaf for just enough of that green herb right. or something. And that's kind of what the oak is meant to do is it, maybe add a certain spice or herbal element to it, a certain sort of structure, but not be the only thing that you're tasting it, in the glass. Exactly right. We always, I always say that it's kind of like the winemaker's spice cabinet. Yeah, it you is. Know, we use different coopers from different areas in France and yeah. uh, that sort of thing to really try and build complexity throughout all the wines, Chardonnay included. Well, let's take a minute and uh, get into this wine. Smell yeah. it's in our glass. and. So this is our Paragon Chardonnay. The idea behind this wine really is to, uh, to make a wine that's appealing to all sorts of white wine drinkers. So I always say this wine is probably the most open to perception of any of the wines that we make. Uh, if you're a consumer who loves oak, it's got plenty. If you don't necessarily like oak, it doesn't have too much. It's got a little bit of that buttery characteristic that people associate with Chardonnay, uh, but not too much. Just about 35 per to dork out a little bit. Just about 35 percent malolactic. 35 percent to give a, to, geeky. <laughs> to give a little bit of that buttery Creamy. component, but not too much. All right, we're gonna let's let's be geeky for just a minute because this is the right type of guy to be talking about it. Malolactic fermentation. Say it three times fast. Malolactic. And when I teach about wine, particularly Chardonnay, is, is the perfect grape to sort of explain what this miraculous process is. You're taking right. malic acids, and the way that I often teach about that is with crunchy green Granny Smith cold apples. Everybody knows you take a big bite of that searing Granny Smith green apple. That's right. the malic acid. Yep. Opposite side of the equation, lactic acids. You're talking about milk-based, dairy-based acids. Milk. So that's where that mm -hmm. buttery, the most overused word right. in the history of winemaking, buttery, <laughs> Especially Jammy with Chardonnay. Also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's where that expression comes from, really, I think, is yeah. that sense of those sort of lactic acids, which are, you know, dairy-based, creamy, buttery, milky yeah. type acids. So the whole journey that the wine is making from malic all the way malo lactic to the lactic side of the equation, how much of that you do as a winemaker is another sort of choice that you're making. It, are all of those acids turned into creamy acids, or do you do right. you stop at 50, do you stop at 35, do you go 75? And so here you said it was about how much? About 35 okay. in, the, in this vintage. The way we do it is uh, really trying to utilize malolactic fermentation as uh, a means to balance overall acidity. So in a very yeah. ripe year, we might do a little bit less right. because we know we're going to have bigger textures, bigger year, flavors. You get to let it run and now. Exactly. In an underripe year, when acids are higher, malics are higher, we'll do a little bit more to try and get the wine push to balance it, push itself a little further. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about this beautiful place that we're at, by the way. We've been, we've been talking geeky. Um, to bring it back to people who are maybe casual wine enthusiasts or just getting to know the area, we're in the Edna Valley, which is gorgeous. Yep. Um, really only about, what, like 10 minutes from Pismo Beach. So one of the things we're talking about a lot is amazing surf, amazing wine. Uh, Repeat, <laughs> amazing surf, amazing wine. You know, that you can have this experience. Yep. Who are the people that you're seeing that are coming through your tasting room doors? Who are your buyers? Who are the people that you're, yeah, you're you, seeing? Yeah, we've, we've got a really great mix. You know, Edna Valley's got a great reputation locally, so we get, you know, a lot of return customers, which is great, but we get a lot of tourists, too, who spend a lot of time in Pismo Beach uh, and all over the coast and just kind of cruise through. When I'm talking about the winery and, uh, you know, I always get the question, oh, you, this must be just kind of a dream job. And really it is. I mean, there's not a lot of places uh, where you can, you know, surf in the morning, come to work, make wine all day, and then do a night scuba dive. Uh, oh, cool. Before you go home, or you know, do a barbecue on the beach, something like that. So it's a, it's an yeah. amazing, amazing place. I think one of the phrases that's come up quite a bit is classic California. So when you're talking about California dreaming for people who you know aren't blessed to live right here, like you know I do or you do, yeah. that there's that opportunity to um, really experience kind of the classic, you know, the idea of the surfboard in the back of the the old Woody station wagon, yeah. drink a little Chardonnay, you know, clam bake on the beach. That that's actually what people do on a daily basis here. So it's it is nice work. It, it. It's uh, <laughs> it's a dream job. You yeah, Edna Valley Vineyards. I've been talking with Josh Baker, um, really one of the nicest winemakers around this area, and definitely worth a stop. This is a beautiful, beautiful venue, too. I mean, just gorgeous vineyards and beautiful tasting room, lots of great wine to try. So we hope you'll stop by Edna Valley Vineyards in the Edna Valley, California.